Hello there. In this video we're going to discuss two types of numbers. Uh, the first type of number that we're going to discuss is the triangular numbers, and the second type of number that we're going to discuss is going to be the tetrahedral numbers. And we're also going to do a few examples of mathematical induction, just in case you were not so familiar or comfortable with this type of proof technique. Alright, so let's begin by defining uh, geometrically what the triangular numbers represent. So the first triangular number we're going to define as t1 to be equal to 1. The second triangular number is going to be formed by having two base points and then a, another base point above it. And we're going to make this base point uh, the same as this one. So we have one up there, and then we have two down here. And the triangular number is the number of dots that pretty much comprise this triangle. So we see here that T2 is going to be equal to 3. So the next triangular number is going to be 3 dots, then 2 dots, and then 1. So in this case, T3 is going to be equal to 3 plus 3, which is 6. So again, uh, these three dots here are the same as those three dots there. And you can find that T4 is going to be equal to 10. So let's see if we can try and generate a formula for this type of number. So let's consider, say, T5. So T5 corresponds to the picture with five base points at the bottom, then four base points above that, then three, then two, then one. So we have one on the second, on the first row, two on the second, three on the third, four on the fourth, and five on the fifth. So we have that T5 is just gonna be equal to one plus two plus three plus four plus five, or in summation notation, that's just going to be the sum from k is equal to 1 to 5 of k. So in general, we do know a formula for this. This is, of course, going to be k times k plus 1 divided by 2. And we're going to evaluate this at k is equal to 5, right? Uh, actually, this should be... Uh, in usually, it's just n, but uh, let's just stay consistent. So let's evaluate this at n n plus 1 over 2 evaluated at n is equal to 5. So that's going to be 5 times 5 plus 1 over 2, or 30 divided by 2, which is going to be 15. So, at least it's our claim that tk is going to be equal to k times k plus 1, all divided by 2. So this is our claim. And we're going to be using, at least as an assumption from this geometrical interpretation, and you can prove this if you want, um, but we see that T5 is just equal to T4 plus 5. So one can also say that Tk is the same as Tk minus 1 plus k, right? So we're going to be using this result in a proof of this particular claim. Right? So this is where we're going to use mathematical induction. So mathematical induction starts off by testing a base case, which is going to be k is equal to 1. So when k is equal to 1, is this equal to the first triangular number? Well, we have that t1 is going to be equal to 1 times 1 plus 1 divided by 2, which of course is equal to 1. So the base case works, and then we're going to assume that k is equal to n is true. So if k is equal to n is true, that means we're going to assume that tn is equal to n times n plus 1 divided by 2. And using these two objects, our goal is show that t n plus 1 is equal to n plus 1 times n plus 1 plus 1 over 2. So this is our goal to show. Alright, so what is Tm plus 1? So Tm plus 1, as we know, is just going to be equal to Tn 
plus n plus 1, right? So we've already assumed a value for tn. That's just going to be equal to n times m plus 1 over 2. And then we have this m plus 1 term. And what we're going to do is we're going to just multiply top and bottom of that by 2. So then we have n squared plus n plus 2n plus 2 all over 2, which uh, compresses into n squared plus 3m plus 2 all over 2. Right? So that factors nicely. So that's just m plus 2 times m plus 1 over 2, which is just another way of writing. So that's just going to be n plus 1 times m plus 1 plus 1, all divided by 2. So that's true. So in general, we have proven via mathematical induction that tk is equal to k times k plus 1 over 2 for k greater than or equal to 1. So now we move on to the tetrahedral numbers. So tetrahedral. All right, so again, we're going to begin by defining the first tetrahedral number. I'll denote it as capital T. Now, tetrahedron are three-dimensional shapes, so I apologize ahead of time uh, before I start drawing this. So our second tetrahedral number, so I'm going to begin by having uh, those two vertices here. So this is going to be a face of the tetrahedron. Then we're going to have this there, that there, and that there. So that's my first tetrahedron. So how many vertices do I have here? So I have that T2 is going to be equal to 4. And let's see if I can draw the next tetrahedron and what it looks like. So I have three points there. Let's see here. Yeah, this is going to be bad, but uh, let's see what it comes out to. Alright, so I'm going to connect these three here. Connect those three. And then I'm going to connect those together. Yeah, this is not a art channel, keep that in mind. All right, so so keep in mind this piece right here is this piece right here. Um, just a heads up. So I'm going to connect those, connect those, connect those, and I'm also going to connect those. All right? Okay, cool. So that's not too bad. But uh, I'll let you be the judge of that. So T3 is going to be equal to 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. So that's my third tetrahedral number. And so what exactly am I drawing here? So notice that this pretty much is the first triangular structure. And this piece right here is the second triangular structure. So this is T1, T2, and remember this is... Uh, this face is T3, right? So T3 is three base points, two points there, and one point there. Great. So, therefore, it's very easy to see that the kth tetrahedral number is just going to be the sum of triangular numbers. So, uh, let's do uh, L is equal to 1 to K of TL. All right, so this is going to be T1 plus T2 plus T3 all the way up to Tk. All right, so that's the kth tetrahedral number, which is, of course, related to the triangular numbers. So what would the fourth tetrahedral number be? So T4 is going to be equal to T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4, All right? So T1 was 1. T2 was 3, then T3 is going to be 3 plus 3, which is 6, and then T4 is going to be 6 plus 4, which is 10. So we have 10 plus 6 plus 3 plus 1, so that's going to be 6 plus 3 is 9, plus that's going to be 20. Right. 
So that's the fourth tetrahedral number. So if we were to draw that picture, um, that would be what we get. Okay, cool. So let's see if we can try and generate a formula uh, for the uh, nth tetrahedral number, right? And let's do that by looking at T5 and see if we can extend that. So this is going to be T1 plus T2 plus T3 plus T4 plus T5. All right, so T1 is just going to be 1. T2 is going to be 1 plus 2. I'll put that in brackets. T3 is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3. T4 is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4. And then T5 is going to be 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5, right? All right, so what do we have here? So count how many ones we have. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So we have five ones. So we have five times one. And how many twos do we have? So we have one, two, three, and four. So we have four twos. And how many threes do we have? We have one, two, and three. So we have three times three. And then plus how many fours? We have one, two. So four twos. And how many fives do we have? We just have one. Right? So notice we do have uh, some nice uh, symmetry or symmetrical nature to these products, right? It'll actually be a lot better if we write this in a more convenient way. I, I seem to have uh, wrote it in a way I'm not pleased with. So I can write this as 5 times 1, 4 times 2, 3 times 3. So I got 5, 4, 3. I want 2 in the next position and then one in the next position. This is going to be a lot easier to uh, extend. So, if I were to ask you, okay, what would be the generalization of Tn? So Tn is just going to be the sum from k is equal to 1 to m. So we're going to have, so actually let's do 5 first. Let's write this in summation notation first. So T5 is going to be the sum from k is equal to 1 to 5. So the first term is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So how can we have that in decreasing fashion? Since summation tends to be increasing. So that's going to be 5 minus k plus 1, right? So that's going to be 6 minus 1, uh, 6 minus 2, 6 minus 3, 6 minus 4, 6 minus 5. And then we're going to have k on the right-hand side. Uh, so if I were to ask you, okay, what would the nth tetrahedral number be, be represented as? Uh, you would probably say that this is going to be the sum from k is equal to 1 to n of n minus k plus 1 multiplied by k, right? So this is going to be our claim for the formula for the nth tetrahedral number, which we'll prove by mathematical induction in just a moment. But before we get into that, I just want to write this in non-summation notation, get a nice closed formula like we did for our triangular numbers. So if this is true, then capital Tn is going to be the sum from k is equal to 1 to n of, we're going to have uh, nk minus k squared plus k uh, in parentheses. Uh, and then we have some common terms. We have nk and k to sort of combine there. So we have that the nth tetrahedral numbers claim to be the sum from k is equal to n of n plus 1 times k minus k squared. And then I can distribute the sum over and factor out everything that's not dependent on k. So we have that our claim for the nth tetrahedral number is going to be n plus 1 multiplied by the sum from k is 1 to n of k, which is just going to be the sum of integers, minus the sum from k is 1 to n of k squared, which is just the sum of the first n squares. So we actually have closed form representations for this term and this term. And if you're not familiar with those, definitely check them out in the pre-calculus series. So we have that Tn is just going to be equal to n plus 1 times n times n plus 1, all divided by 2, and then minus n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1, all divided by 6. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply this by 3 uh, to get a common denominator. And then what do I have? I have n times n plus 1 in common in both of these terms. So I'm going to factor that out. Right. So we have that Tn is going to be equal to n times n plus 1, all multiplied by, so we have 
n plus 3, so I'm just folding that over, so that's 3n plus 3, and then minus 2n minus 1, all over 6. So we can simplify this, so 3n minus 2n is just going to be n, and 3 minus 1 is going to be 2. So we actually have a very nice representation for the n tetrahedral number, which is n, n plus 1, n plus 2 over 6, right? So this is our claim for the nth tetrahedral number. And remember, there was a representation that we sort of uh, claimed, which we could also prove before. So Tn, the nth tetrahedral number, is T1 plus T2 plus T3, all the way up to Tn. That is the sum of the first n triangular numbers. All right, so let's go through a proof uh, of this claim. So, proof. So, T1, so this is going to be our initial condition. So this is going to be 1 plus 1 plus 2 times 1 plus 2 over 6. And that's just going to be equal to 2 times 3, which is 6 over 6, which is equal to 1. So that checks out. Uh, so we're going to assume that this is true for Tn is equal to n n plus 1, n plus 2 over 6. So we're going to assume that this is true and then prove it for the n plus 1 case, right? Which is going to give us n plus 1 times n plus 2 times n plus 3 over 6. So let's see if we can generate that expression. So t n plus 1. So as we know, this is going to be equal to t1 plus t2 plus t3 plus all the way up to t n plus t n plus 1. The sum of the first n plus 1 triangular numbers. But as we know, this expression, of course, is just the nth tetrahedral number. Right? So we know that t n plus 1 is going to be equal to t n plus the n plus 1th triangular number. So this is just going to be equal to, by our assumption, n times n plus 1 uh, times n plus 2 all divided by 6. And remember that the nth triangular number is n times n plus 1 over 2, so when we replace m with n plus 1, uh, that's just going to give us n plus 1 times n plus 2 all divided by 2. And I'm just going to multiply the top and bottom of this by 3 so I can get a common denominator there. Right. All right, so what is that going to give us? So notice that I have a n plus 1, n plus 2 in common. So once I factor that out, that's just going to give me n plus 3 uh, there. Right. So that's just going to be equal to n plus 1 times n plus 2 times n plus 3 all over 6, which is the same thing as what we were trying to prove. So this is going to be uh, n, plus, n times n plus 1 times n plus 2, uh, and that's it. So we don't need to write anything else. That's actually sufficient. All right. So that means the nth, or the kth tetrahedral number, is just going to be equal to k times k plus 1 times k plus 2 all over 6. So I hope this just gives you some basic practice on how to use mathematical induction to prove some relationships that are sort of based around a set of positive integers and also some basic uh, connections between numbers, the sums of integers, sums of squares, and tetrahedral and triangular numbers. Hope you enjoyed.